Good morning, everyone. Here I am, sitting in my pajamas. I just started my day, and I always start the day with prayer and reading in my Bible. When I go to bed at night, I read in my Bible and then I pray, which is like the reverse uh, sequence. Very funny. And while I was praying, I was led to the book of Second Peter in the Bible. And I've watched a very helpful interview, very encouraging interview of Amir Tsarfati and Shannon Scholten. And they were discussing what we as Christians could do in the midst of all the things that are going on in the world and how we can use social media to spread the gospel and to tell people about Jesus and that there is hope in the middle of everything that's going on. And one of the things that Shannon advised uh, as a tip was to read scriptures. Just read scriptures, uh, post scriptures so that people can get acquainted with the word of God and that they can get to know him. So I want to read scriptures with you today. It's my first time. Uh, of course, I post scriptures often, but I want to read to you something right now. I got a paper Bible. I got an English one, the NIV version of the Holy Bible. And I want to read to you the book that I was talking about, Second Peter. <laughs> I always like it to write in my Bible and I put the date on it uh, when, when I read it and I underline things that speak to me. And um, yeah, this, this book is not a very, very big book. It's three pages, but I, uh, I really was encouraged to, uh, to share that with you guys. So um, here we go. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Confirming one's calling and election. His divine power, God's power, has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. And now comes one of my very, very favorite verses. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are called, as Christians, we are called to be persons like that. But whoever does not have them is short-sighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Prophecy of Scripture. So, I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. This is why I'm so open about my walk of faith and my faith journey, so that other people can be encouraged as well and to always remind people of the goodness of God and the love of Jesus which yeah are such beautiful things I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body because I know that I will put it aside soon as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me 
and I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. And then I wrote uh, one word next to that, legacy. What will be your legacy? For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He, the Lord Jesus Christ, received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And then there's a little footnote on the bottom which says that you can go back uh, to other books to read about that, that part. And then you can go to Matthew chapter 17, verse 5, Mark chapter 9, verse 7, and Luke chapter 9, verse 35. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him, with Jesus, on the sacred mountain. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to, to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place. We are called to be light and salt. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will. But prophets, though they were human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Some people say to me, uh, the Bible is written by men. So how literally can you take it? And then I always explain them that the people who wrote the books were uh, carried along by the Holy Spirit. So it was God speaking through those people and then they wrote it down. So that. <laughs> Let's go to chapter number two. False teachers and their destruction. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce the destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. Disrepute? I don't know exactly how to pronounce that. I'm so sorry. Verse 3. In their greed, these teachers, those false teachers, will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, uh, there's a little footnote that says, in Greek it's called Tartarus, putting them, so those angels got kicked out of heaven, Putting them in chains of darkness, and then a little footnote says, some manuscripts say, in gloomy dungeons. To be held for judgment, if God did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but God protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. If God condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes, and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. And if God rescued Lot, a righteous man, who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless, for that righteous man, living among them day after day, was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. Well, I really can relate to Lot in that way because I see so much lawlessness in the world these days and that really breaks my heart. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, they are not afraid to heap abuse on celestial beings. Yet, even angels, 
although they are stronger and more powerful, do not heap abuse on such beings when bringing judgment on them from the Lord. But these people, so the lawless people, blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are like unreasoning animals, creatures of instinct, born only to be caught and destroyed. And like animals, they too will perish. Verse number 13. They will be paid back with harm for the harm they have done. Their idea of pleasure is to carouse in broad daylight. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their pleasures while they feast with you. And then the little footnote says, some manuscripts say, reveling in their pleasures in their love feasts. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed and a cursed brook. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Bezer. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Who loved the wages of wickedness. But that is such an amazing story. But he, Balaam, son of Bezer, was rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey, an animal without speech, who spoke with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These people are springs without water and mists driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved for them. For they mouth empty, boastful words and, by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. Verse number 19. They promise them freedom, while they themselves are slaves of depravity. Depravity? For, listen to this, people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. Let's read that again. People are slaves to whatever has mastered them. So this is what addiction is. You are a slave to the thing that you're addicted to, whether it's a drug or alcohol, gambling, women, men, sex, pornography. Everything that you are a slave to is a master over you. And God wants to free us from that. We continue. First number 20. If they have escaped the corruption of the world, by knowing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and are again entangled in it, in the wickedness, and are overcome again by the wickedness, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it, and then to turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. Verse number 22. Of them, the proverbs are true. A dog returns to its vomit, and a sow that is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. Going back to the proverb, a dog returns to its vomit. I read that a while ago, and I didn't understand it, so I put a question mark in it. So when I was at Bert and Thea's a couple of weeks ago, I asked them, we were talking about it, and then I asked them, what does it mean, a dog returning to its vomit? And then they explained that imagine that you get into a relationship with someone and that person is physically and, and mentally abusing you. And then you break up and you speak very poorly about that person of all the things that that person did to you. And then after a while, you run into that person again. And then you get back together with that person, back into a relationship. So that is like a dog returning to its vomit. That's pretty clear, right? So don't be that dog that returns to its vomit. Let's go to chapter number three, which is the last chapter already of this book. The day of the Lord. This is where hope, come, hope comes in. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. So 
this is what I'm also very passionate about, wholesome thinking, because whatever is in the mind gets in the heart, whatever gets in the heart comes out through your speech and through your behavior. Verse number three, above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming? As he promised, where is this coming of the Lord? Ever since our ancestors die, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters, also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. And I've written about that a couple of times already. God is standing outside of time. So while we are waiting for things and we are impatient, it's like this to God and he has so much more in store for us, but we are sometimes just too impatient. Verse number nine of chapter number three, second Peter. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. In my case, I, I understand his slowness. I truly trust God's timing for my life. I trust his will for my life. And I'm just, uh, I'm just walking with Jesus. And every day is one big adventure. Instead, he, the Lord, is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So this time, the time that we're living in right now with all the craziness in the world, it's like this, this time of mercy where people still can repent and turn to the Lord and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So if you haven't accepted Jesus in your life yet, I really would like to encourage you to do so because there are big things coming in the future. Verse number 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Uh, the little footnote says, some manuscripts say be burnt up. So everything done in it will be burnt up. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, God's promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him, with God. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, uh, redding. Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. He, Paul, writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant, and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures, to their own destruction. I can understand that when you don't know the Bible, and you don't know God, and you don't know Jesus, that everything seems weird, and you cannot understand, and you want to explain it all, and, and have it scientifically proven. Uh, but this is where faith comes in. And I truly believe in God. I truly believe in Jesus. And I truly believe in the word of God. 
and yeah reading the bible and getting to know god because the word is god it will open up things to you it will speak to you and the holy spirit will lead you through it and i really would encourage everybody to read in the bible and um to get to know god and to get to know jesus and to start in the in the new testament so if you want to get to god uh you have to go through the bridge that is jesus and in the new testament you learn all about jesus and what he stands for and then um you will find your way to the father i'm sure now let's go to the last verse of chapter 3 of second peter therefore dear friends since you have been forewarned be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position but grow in the grace and knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. I love that book. I love that book so much because it says uh, how we are called to, to behave. And it also brings hope for the people who accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It gives hope for the future, uh, a new heaven and a new earth and that you won't perish so yeah this is something that i wanted to share with you guys if you're still here watching thank you so much i hope this was helpful i hope the words the word of god spoke to your heart and i hope that if you don't know jesus or you don't know god yet that yeah it, it encourages you to get to know him and um if you already are a christian i hope this encourages you to, to read your Bible and to be close to God and to, yeah, to keep walking with Jesus. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this Bible reading, can you give it a thumbs up? I would like it a lot. Comment down below what you think of it. Uh, if you know the verse already, tell me what your favorite Bible verse is. Just uh, leave it in the comment down below. And I will be seeing you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you guys. Bye. <laughs>